So last week we spent some time talking about how to pick the correct MSP for your business. This week we're turning the tables. And uh, one of Skip's favorite, favorite things to rant is how to uh, pick your clients. Yeah. So, well, a lot of people say, how do you pick a client? What do you mean? I'll take any client that'll come to my table. <laughs> Not all business is good business. Not all business <laughs> is good business. And if you haven't learned this lesson yet, wait. Yep. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Yeah. I, that, that was actually, uh, I don't know, it was, it was, it was a while ago, but uh, it was a, an early maturity uh, milestone in my professional career when I learned that. And it's, it's so simple, but uh, when I learned that not all business is good business, I, I don't know, I, I felt I had, you know, graduated into a little bit, you know, different arena as far as professional, because I don't know, I just, up until that point is like, close the deal, close the deal, you know, cash the check, cash the check. And um, after a while, you know, you realize, you know, there's more to this than just the numbers going through the bank account. And yeah, not all business is good business. So as an MSP, we, we do need to be selective on this. And it, it, many of you, you know, MSPs out there have, uh, you know, been through this cycle and, and you, you're, you definitely know what's going on here, but uh, let's break this down a little bit. I mean, what what really is important to an MSP in in gaining new customers? Adam, what what do you what do you think you know is going to be the best quality that an MSP should look for in a client? Yeah, do they have a fat paycheck? There we go. <laughs> And, and, and that's, that's a little bit, uh, tongue in cheek, but we all know it's true. If you're looking for a client, you're looking for somebody who is able to pay the premium price and is going to be quiet. Yep. So that, that's what I like to, that's what I like to think that people are looking for as an MSP, but then you discover this person has a very fat wallet and they're very needy. Yeah. Can I go back to my relationship, but you know, like in your personal life, you have this person you're going out on a date with, they seem to admit all your criteria and then they call you 10 minutes after the date and then they call you an hour after the date. And then the next day they call you and then they talk about a trip that you need to go on. And all of a sudden your life is no longer yours. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> and so the, the cost per transaction, you know, on an MSP, becomes really high because yeah, sure. They're paying you 30, $40,000 a month or whatever the contract is, but they're taking up 90% of your resources when you've got that whale on the line and mm -hmm. it's great. But what happens if that whale goes away and there's this, this resiliency that you trade off. So if you've got a client providing you 90% of your work, if they decide for some reason to go into that direction, hire internally or something like that, now you're scrambling to find a way to backfill all that cash. And so that's a bad situation to be in. So um, to answer your question, Skip, what's the number one thing people look for is a fat wallet. And what's going to bury you? A fat wallet. That's it. That's <laughs> and, it exactly. And, and yeah. so there's no such thing as a free lunch. So when you're looking for your clients, you want to find people who help your portfolio be diverse. So if you lose a client, you can gain another. And it's not that big of a deal. You want to keep your clients, you want to help your clients, but you don't want to be dependent. And a lot of MSPs start out that way where they have a whale. And then over time, they diversify their portfolio. And that, yeah. that's fine. But what I'll oh, go ahead. Well, and, and the ability for someone to pay, you know, you, you may go somewhere and and you get a pretty quick indication that they're willing to pay just about anything, but their ability to pay may be becoming questionable and their uh, their their ability to pay long term uh, may be in question. So, you know, uh, and, and it, it's a hard deal to to kind of uncover some of this bit of information, but this is where a really good account management team can uh, can help you out and kind of know the lay of the land, so to speak. And there are businesses out there that are just mowing through vendors of all sorts. You know, you roll up and they've got, you know, half the buildings painted one color and half the other, another color because, you know, their contractors left or they're just, they're always changing their minds. 
Um, but finding the, those businesses that are consistent, that not only can they afford to pay, uh, but are they going to be able to pay long term? Their willingness versus their long term in there, and that's really hard to track down. But uh, if you've got someone, they're a startup, uh, and they're like, "Hey, we're really watching what we want to do here. We've got a budget set out." I think those are kind of good, good uh, indicators. If if you get in with a startup, they're like, "Hey, we've got some capital funds. We've got a line of credit with the bank. You know, uh, we really, you know, price is no option right now or something." Man, those are those are the ones that make me nervous. Um, you know, I, I just I hesitate to start down a path for those people because I know in the end it's not going to be as profitable as it sounds like. Yeah, you know, it's almost a red flag when you're looking for clients and somebody comes in and says, "Oh, don't worry about price. Uh, don't worry about." It's like, wait a minute, why are you on the market? Yeah, <laughs> you yeah, know, yes, that's it. I got yes. like, why are they? Oh, that's really good. Why are they on the market? What happened to their last MSP? Why is it he, you know, raking in all this cash? Yeah, I have, I have I, you know, I have, I have a few friends and, uh, you know, they're always talking about like shopping around for a car or, you know, like uh, some are on the dating scene, some are on uh, the uh, the just the market for looking for heck, even a dog. And you look yeah, at this yep. and you're and you're seeing this 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 used car, this new relationship, this new pet you're looking for, and you're like, okay, so why is it on the market? You know, this looks mm -hmm. too good to be true, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. What what yeah. when when is this all gonna fall apart? This car has mm -hmm. a really great price tag on it, it has one user, and they want a they want almost no money for it. What, what's going on? So you're always looking for that catch, you know. Mm -hmm. This is too good to be true. So if somebody comes up to you with a really fat wallet and says, Oh yeah, we'll pay for whatever. We'll do whatever you say. And like, oh, what happened to your last MSP? What mm -hmm. happened there? You know, and you start wondering where where is the where is the uh, where is the catch here? Yeah. And so, you know, picking a client, um, there's a lot of negatives to be had just by shopping by a wallet. So I want to talk about a little bit about the pros here. Let's look yeah. for rather than shopping by wallet size, what if we picked our clients based upon culture? So I've seen a number of MSPs do this, where they say, we primarily focus on dental offices or doctor's offices. Mm -hmm. We are familiar with their culture. We know how they work. Um, and we are looking for other uh, medical offices in the area that would like support as well. Now you've kind of narrowed your, your lane, but because you are clear about the style and culture that you're looking for, you can say no to people who may take more of your time. Mm -hmm. I love MSPs who are more boutique in this fashion where they have a lane because it's so efficient. You don't have this wide diverse portfolio of clients and that's fine because now you know when you walk into this doctor's office, it's very similar to the last doctor's office you walked into. Thank you, yeah. regulation. And <laughs> so that you're now dealing with the customer. You're, you get to focus a lot on the customer because their problems are very similar from client to client. And then when there's a major issue, it's affecting all the clients, like new upgrade. You know, this, uh, this portal, new portals coming out. The health management system is getting an upgrade and they all use the same one. So you can schedule it out and maybe you can hire a specialist that works with those, those portals to support the customers. It's very efficient. And now you're looking at these customers and you have low overhead because you have a high amount of value and you're working in a context that all your employees know. And so now you're like, well, what client should I pick? Pick one that's similar to your other clients. Mm -hmm. Well, that means I'm not diverse. No, no, that does not mean mm -hmm. you're not diverse. That means that you have a lane, that you have a specialty. And that means that your customers are going to be loyal to you. It means yeah. that you're going to have more efficient time. So you don't have an engineer jumping from a school and then going to a clinic, two completely different cultures. So they got to do that brain shift if, between mm -hmm. every jump. It's like, I'm going from this family practice to this family practice. And it's like working at a corporation almost. Yeah. And unless, you know, the, the industry that you're looking at is, you know, uh, the industry itself is, is volatile, you know, it could disappear in and of itself tomorrow. Uh, then, you know, there's always going to be businesses operating in there. If you have uh, some some clients that could, you know, suffer from a market shift, but uh, the the need, the service that's being offered uh, from those those businesses is still going to exist. And there's going to be a place for you 
uh, in in the marketplace after the shift. So th- there is a level to uh, be specific yet diverse um, by by. And another thing here is we're, by not going too deep. If you're trying to be the subject matter expert for your clients, you are picking a pretty narrow lane to be in, and yeah. that might not be the best opportunity. So uh, being familiar with your clients is going to broaden uh, the the area and the industry that you can operate in. Yeah. And I'm not saying you can't have multiple areas, like maybe yeah, you do absolutely. law offices and you do doctor's offices. That's okay. Um, But at least you're defining the kind of cultures you're looking for. And then there are some ancillary benefits to this. One is that you will feel less tired because your brain is focused on familiar things. And when you do that, you, you leave capacity for your brain to think creatively. Now, if you're constantly flipping from school to law office to doctor office to small business selling toys, you're you're not leaving any room for creativity because you're constantly learning something new and you're constantly switching to a new environment. It's exhausting. And well, some of and you listening to this podcast are like, yeah, I'm a boutique. I, I yeah. focus on certain lanes of customers and I'm a specialty shop and we love it. We, we are happy. We have a great solid culture and we're well known in the community. And there is another benefit to this. It allows you to say no. Yes. And oh, do not awesome. underestimate the power of saying <laughs> no very yeah. clearly. And so that somebody comes in and says, hey, you know, we got a school that needs some support uh, with uh, Google Office and like that. Like, you know what? Um, I see what you're trying to do. And we don't support G Suite. We, we're a Microsoft shop for largely uh, dental clinics in the downtown area. Uh, you know what I can do? I've got a great partner MSP that I work with that focuses on schools and they can definitely help you out. I highly recommend them. Let, let me make an introduction and you work it through. And the cool thing is now that other MSP who's focused on schools can recommend you when they find a dental office that needs help and you both win. And, you know, that's why we run our, com- our company here is like, we know as main services platform and humanize IT, what our lane is. We are strategic services for MSPs. If you want somebody to solve your spreadsheet and figure out how things are, uh, uh, the life cycle of your products, we don't care. We care about client conversations. Mm -hmm. We care about having strategic initiatives and having C-level operations with your clients. And that's who we are. And so if you want something else, we're happy to help you find something else. But we know our lane. We know who our customers are. We know who our clients are. And we're looking for them. And we're able to say no when we find somebody who's not going to be a good fit. They're going to get into the software. They're going to start using it like, oh, this doesn't do anything. It's not fully automated. And like, you know what? We're not a good fit for you. But you know who is? And then we we show them one of our, our favorite uh, people that are also in the space. Yep. And that's great because then everybody wins. We're in it to help the customer. And you can be too. Now, it could be that you're strapped for cash right now. And maybe it's because you're trying to spread out your demographic too far. Mm-hmm. What if you started a LinkedIn campaign? I know I'm, I'm learning how to do it too, guys. It's, it's awful. But <laughs> what if you started a LinkedIn campaign saying, hey, any dental offices in the area, please show them this ad about how we focus on dental offices in the San Francisco area or in Nebraska. And now this, this thing's like, don't you wish you had a technology company that understood who you are? You can now target your campaigns. You're not just another noisy MSP out there asking for business. You're now somebody who cares about the person in front of them, who can talk about the history they've had with dental offices and how they've helped them generate more revenue, how they built out their um, their waiting area so kids had iPads to play <laughs> with and the kiosks for clients to sign up for new appointments are in place. You could talk in context and this potential client's like, oh my gosh, you get it. You yeah. get me. Yeah. You get what I'm looking for. I want to hire you. Take all my money. <laughs> and that, that's it. We really need to be in, intentional about this. So I, I had a great opportunity to work with an MSP many years ago. And, and we kind of, uh, for a little while there, we had this, this funny saying internally. Uh, or when we were talking with, you know, a few people and we'd say, half of our business is small business. And half of it is uh, government education. And half of it is oil and gas. 
right. <laughs> I just came up with three halves right there, right? And but we were in an interesting market, and there there were a lot of ebbs and flows here. And as the the small business was was pretty consistent, but the the government and the education fluctuated. You know, from year to year, there could be some large fluctuations. And the interesting part about it were those fluctuations were kind of opposite of the oil and gas industry out there. Uh, so when oil and gas was doing great, it's usually not until the latter years that uh, the government and education would come around as they begin to reap the tax benefits of that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it was just a, it was a unique space. A uh, unique time, and it didn't last forever. You know, we had to stay adaptive. We had to constantly look at this. Not like something we could say, "Hey, we're going to do this now for the next twenty years." Obviously, that doesn't work out. But we were intentional enough about it and cognizant enough about they were thinking about this. Yes. And if something else were coming up in another area, we were looking at the opportunities. But there was always this thought in the back of our mind: "Is hey, is this too much of a stretch for us? Is this too too far outside of our lane?" Do you really want to deal with, uh, you know, manufacturing? Is that something that's in your lane? Exactly. That's Are there big, enough similarities a, or mm -hmm. is it too, too far away? That's a big deal there. Now, another thing, don't be afraid to ask your clients for a cultural um, fit. And what I mean by that, you're like, oh, what the heck? Um, is when you're in those meetings and you're talking to the client about whether you're not a good fit, I mean, like, do we have access to decision makers? Mm -hmm. We are not an op. You know, if that, you're not an operational really shop, are you an operational shop? And if you're seeing us as turning light bulbs, then we're probably not a good fit. Yep. Adam Walter, if he walks in and you just ask me to fix your PCs for you know 127 an hour, I'm gonna walk out that door. That's not mm -hmm. who I am. Not anymore, anyways. Uh, when I was uh, <laughs> fresh out of college, I'd take anybody. Yeah, you, you need me to to clean your mouse for you. I'm on it. You know, I'm <laughs> eating ramen here. I need, I need more food. Um, <laughs> the, uh, but being able to walk into a door and say, here are some of the requirements we have to be successful. Uh, we need access to a decision makers who can, uh, we can talk to about what's going well and, uh, on a regular basis, meet with them like once a quarter, one, twice a year, once a year, something where we're talking to a C level or one of your or key stakeholders about the business and then being able to make decisions. Yeah. Because if we do that, then we can better align to what you need. This person can tell us, no, they can tell us yes. When we come across something that is going to help your business grow. Yeah. Now we work with a lot of dental offices in the area and we have the highest success when we have access to a key stakeholder or a C-level exec to help us um, make decisions. Yeah. And that is how we want to work. So make those asks. So they say, you know what? You're, you're, you're fixing our computers. You don't need access to the president. You don't need access to decision makers. And like, you know what? That's great. Um, I see what you're doing. Um, I see what you're, you're trying to do, but that's not a fit for us. Right. And, and right away, you have set the tone for the next three years of contracts where like they know that, oh, this company's asking for more. They're asking for access to our decision makers. Yes. These guys are serious. Because you need to have some serious conversations. So uh, my, my journey in the MSP, uh, again, the IT service industry, I've been doing this a long time. Uh, and I remember when we first started really pushing the the managed services business model and so you know we're coming out of the break fix just you know billing people for hours and the conversation that we began having with clients uh got pretty interesting and i knew right away that we could have some very successful um relationships with some customers if if we could have this conversation if i could sit down with a key stakeholder with a an executive decision maker within this organization and I could tell them in, in so many words and sometimes very very few words I could tell them look the way I want this to work is I want you guys to send me a check and never call me all right and and I'd usually kind of put it in some blunt terms like that just to make sure I got their attention and so they would say wait you want me to send you a check every month but you don't want me to call you I said, yes, that's the ideal situation. 
Because if we're doing that, that means I'm taking such good care of your technology infrastructure that your business doesn't need to stop that you don't have issues that are keeping you from making money on your side. And uh, I get to make more money on my side. And when you have these business conversations, when, when they see it, oh, this is really is going to be a partnership. When they understand that um, if you and your team as an MSP, if you guys aren't able to be profitable, if you can't make money, if you can't pay a good wage to your engineers, if you can't have a stable uh, income and you know forecast for your family as an MSP owner, then there's no way that you're going to be able to long term successfully support these other businesses. So these business centric conversations have to happen early on. And if your client really doesn't care if you're you know not able to pay your staff uh, a, a, you know a decent wage, if they don't care if you're able to make money or not, then they're not a good company for you to get in business with. And we lost your audio. Oh man, <laughs> I mute myself. So I want to talk about the, the white elephant in the room or the big elephant or however you want to put it is, well, what if I need the clients? What if I'm desperate? Now that's the other problem with picking a client is desperation sucks. If you're, if you're worried about paying for your engineers right now, because you lost a big client or you got put in a bad situation or you just want to grow, you'll take anybody. Um, that's a bad situation to be in. It is being, you need to be a solid company so you can pick your clients. And so I, I look at it as if you are in that situation where you're desperate, you might just be in a place where you need to revamp your internal org structure and mm -hmm. re and do and spend some time going through uh, some exercise to figure out who are you as an MSP? You know, who ideally would you like to serve? And you should have done this when you initially formed your business plan, but let's be honest. A lot of us got into M being an MSP because we we're good at fixing things and we just kind of fell into it. Someone offered to pay us some money. Sure. Yeah, somebody offered to pay us a bunch of money. We said, sure. Yeah. And eventually we just formed a company out of it. There's a point in which you have to put on your big boy pants or big girl pants, and you have to say, I need to figure out a business plan. Who am I culturally so that I can figure out who my clients are culturally and we can be a lot happier. And you can recognize when you're in this situation, when you're desperate, you're, you're, you're sitting there and you're eating cheese and crackers for the fifth night in a row, stressing <laughs> out about your budget and you're trying to figure out how to pay your employees because you're a good person. And that's, and you're like, okay, where do I get another client? I need desperately need another client that pays me uh, three to $5,000 a month. And that's the point we got to stop back and say, okay, in order to find your next client, in order to pick a next client, you need to know who you are today and who you want to serve. Mm -hmm. And once you define that, you're going to be able to move forward in a much healthier way. And that may mean you have to let go of some key employees. It may be that you have to cut your own salary for six months. This is part of owning a company. We've all been there. Trust yeah. me, I, I feel for you. <laughs> and uh, it's a hard thing to recognize and be given permission to say, it may be time to reorganize. And yeah. maybe we may have written a, we may have moved to a growth area where we need to define who we are as a company so that we can grow even more. Because I mm -hmm. tell you, it's so freeing when you know who your clients are. So, you know, when I say at managed services platform, we're looking for the top 5% MSPs as clients. That's who we're looking for. Mm -hmm. We're not looking for the biggest MSPs. We're looking for the 5%ers who are forward looking and are wanted to be strategic in their initiatives. It makes it easier for me to target with LinkedIn ads, to change our sales presentations and to say no when we need to. And that was a hard conversation we had to have. Yeah, is who yeah, are sure. we culturally so that we know how to find new clients? And so when a client says, "Ah, oh, we're just not a good fit," like, cool, uh, best of luck to you. Um, we're we're always around if you change your culture. And so this is where you need to be as an MSP to pick a good client. You need to know who you are. And this is a universal rule in every relationship. You've got to know yourself before you can be paired up with somebody else. Yeah, you've got to know your business before you can find a proper client. And I don't care if you're an MSP, if you're a law office, if you're a dental office, 
you have to know who you are culturally. If you accept everybody, if you just say everybody's fit, that's fine. You can come in, but just know that you're not going to seek out uh, companies and uh, cultures that are not a fit. And you might have to say, you know what? I see that you really want to work with us, but if you work with this company down the street, they're going to be able to serve you a lot better. Yes. Everybody wins when you know what your culture is. That, that so, on, yes, uh, everybody wins. And if you get into a relationship where it is, it is not winning it, and you know, I've, I've been into a few situations where we were winning, you know, great. I mean, we were just cash and checks left and right from clients, but things weren't going well on their side. I knew that relationship wasn't going to last and I needed to get in there and fix that or those great checks were going to go away. But the inverse is this, if, if you've got a client and they're just paying you you know, pennies on the value that you're providing, there's got to be, there, there, there's going to be some lull times. There's going to be some down times, right? There's no straight lines in this business. Yep. And, you know, if long-term, this is always going to be down, you need to fix it. You need to have a candid conversation with your customer about your profitability, because if you can't make money, you can't support your businesses, your customers in them making money. So I, I love picking clients. I think picking clients is interesting. Um, it's a lot more fun than shopping for employees. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, when you're picking a client, you're looking for a partnership. You're yeah. looking for somebody with a give and a take. But the biggest advice we have for you MSPs out there is know who you are, know what you're looking for so that you can clearly define your potential clients. If yeah. right now you're having a hard time finding clients, it's probably because you don't know who you are. And you haven't well defined it. So you're looking, oh, I'll take anybody. Fix that. Grow in a direction and you will succeed. Yeah. All right. Well, we have a couple other topics coming up in a few weeks here. Uh, I was uh, I was just looking down the list while, while Skip was talking. We have how to fire your MSP, how to fire your client is a two part we'll have uh, in a few weeks. But also how to find good engineers. It's a hot topic in an MSP world and it's a tough one. So how I, as I alluded to earlier, hiring a new employee is hard and mm -hmm. finding one that fits is hard. So we will be covering that as a topic in the upcoming weeks. And I am looking forward to what insights we can get there. Maybe we can get a guest speaker on to kind of talk. Oh, that'd be good. Stuff. Yeah. That All good. right. Well, we'll see everybody later. Have a great week.